There we go. It's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> we we are now on the right camera. Good job. Live on both places. Nailed it. Hello. Else? So welcome to my sewing room. I'm Leah. I'm Chelsea. <laughs> and we started a little project on Tuesday. We sure did. Of making a quilt label for somebody here at work who needs a quilt label and a quilt. And so if you want to see the whole setup of how we built the initial quilt label, you can go watch Tuesday's video, both on Facebook and YouTube. Um, we took it back to her and we made a few edits. Mm -hmm. But most of the concept is where we started last week on Tuesday. Yep. Getting some nice letters in a formation for a label. Yes. <laughs> um, and we did something a little bit different. Um, she doesn't want a border around it or any extra embellishments. Um, so we're just going with the text. And instead of having multi lines of text, we're doing one long skinny label. Yep. She's putting it at the bottom of her quilt. It's going to be yeah. fantastic. Be on awesome. the front of the quilt. Oh, she's putting it on the front. Yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure. Cool. Sweet. It's going to be awesome. So, um, we're going to pop over onto the screen. We'll show you what we've since rebuilt. And right now I'm zoomed in all the way because I was just double checking spelling and all of those good things. So up at the top of the screen, oh, just off camera because that's where the camera is. Um, there's the, yeah, that 400%. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Um, we could screw, go back down to 100%. It's just a wee little quilt label. So it's half inch. The letters are a half inch tall. And the label will be 10 and a bit long. 10.22 inches. Yes. Almost 10 and a quarter. So if I was going to make a bunch of labels um, for a quilt that were all this long and skinny, I would do them all in one hooping as much as I could. Yes, unless you'd like to leave the fabric a bit wider like we are today. Yeah. So um, what we're going to do from here is we're going to go in and add a basting box, which you can't do until you're on the embroidery screen. So we'll hit embroidery. And then under layout, we'll add our basting box. And that will give us a nice line to trim from and make sure this is all squared up when we're all done. So from there, we need to get our hoop ready. Bring it over. I'm on, yeah, on the top camera. And stabilizers I like to use for quilt labels. Um, we've done a little bit of fabric prep already, just because there's only so much space on our studio table. Um, we've put a layer of fusible woven on the back of our quilting cotton. This is just going to help support the, the fabric much less likely to pucker. It doesn't add a whole bunch of structure because it's quite lightweight, um, but we'll just have a cleaner, crisper bunch of text on it. So that's the first thing we've done. And got a whole width of fabric to work with. <laughs> I'm sure there's a reason for that. Um, and then I like to use a pair of stabilizers on my quilt labels. Um, I use Clean and Tear and um, always use Poly Mesh. And I usually do both. Um, the clean and tear is going to be the lower layer and the poly mesh is going to be closest to the fabric and it's going to stay in the label. Um, but it's very, very soft when it's all done. So it's not going to make your quilt stiff. Nope. Which I really like. So, and the stiff one that looks stiff comes in. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's how we're rolling there. Um, Chelsea's cut these epically larger than we need, but they do fit the hoop, which is important. Yes! <laughs> so. I I do not want to skimp on stabilizer and have it pull out of the hoop or have sadness happen. That's true. I agree. <laughs> um, so to hold all these layers together, we're going to use Odex 505 Temporary Spray. Um, I like to spray the stabilizers, one of them, and adhere those together before also using this on the back of the fabric. That is it, yeah. I'm going to do this, um, not on the table, because it seems dangerous. Yeah, the more you can keep it away from the your items and your machine, yeah. the 
clean are your workstations going to stay? Yeah. You don't want to know how I know that. If you could hold that for a minute. But it's true. <laughs> I like to spray the poly mesh, but then lay the uh, clean and tear on top of it. Because the clean and tear just is a little crisper and easier to set down. Beautiful. And if you're... I did cut that way too big. That's okay. I was overly ambitious today. And then you might not be able to see it on camera, but there's no fuckers there, which... It's beautiful. Would be the goal. And uh, because our fabric strip is quite skinny that we're working with, I'm actually going to get the all the stabilizer hooped and then go from there. So today I'm using the 7x14 magnetic frame that works with the brother over there. Do you need to be more zoomed out, Leah? Maybe. That, that one. Yeah, that one. See our goodies. So with this hoop, uh, there's little arrows on the magnets and what I like to do to make sure this is going on nice and cleanly and not introducing any wrinkles as we go is start with two magnets away from each other. Honestly, this is one of my favorite types of hoops for hooping multiple layers of stabilizer. I find when I'm squishing them into a traditional hoop, I do get those puckers even if I spray. Yeah. yeah. But this keeps it so flat. It's also beautiful for quilt sandwiches. Right? Love this. And then our with the fabric strip, where roughly were we wanting this text? Dead center, dead center. Dead center, dead center. So it's gonna be a really long label. It's potentially. Okay. We haven't decided on how it's going to be inserted into our quilt. Okay. So the thought is extra fabric. Okay. Really good spraying skills. Spraying your fabric. Yep. You didn't even get it on yourself. Not this time. <laughs> so I'm going to fold that in half wrong, right sides together. Because if we're aiming for roughly middle. Um, I can that looks those, perfect. I can use those arrows. Yeah. To go roughly middle. And you just want to be super gentle. Uh, placing the fabric down because you don't want to introduce wrinkles in the fabric as you go. And one of the things I like about this particular hoop is because these magnets can come on and off as you go, I would be quite comfortable pulling a magnet at the bottom and holding that flappy tail out of the way. So That's a great lift. plan. And same thing up at the top. And then we won't accidentally stitch our tails into our project. We still have to manage this tail as Are it slides sure? in. Yes. 100% <laughs> I'm sure. That's how I know. <laughs> All right. And, and visually, I centered that. Do you know how I manage those tails when I'm sliding in? How? Because I flip them forward so I can see them. And then I try to remember to put them back after I get in. Okay. <laughs> we'll carry on that, that um, way. Otherwise, um, it definitely gets stuck underneath. All right. You know what? I just had a... a... Oh, are you going to mark us? Yeah. Great plan. Well, I, can take I think I can still see the factory. I can't see the factory. Oh, it's right here. I can see the factory. Do you want to mark our other vertical? Yep, and this Beautiful. is five, just about five inches. I think it's a random number of width. Whatever was left from the other. That looks okay. beautiful. That'll give us a little bit of a landing zone. Perfect. Chelsea's going to take this over to the machine. We have to wiggle in past the foot past the magnets oh they can't see what i'm doing there we go yeah uh so the way i got this in was i went through the corner actually if you try and go the other way your foot will not make it past i get that lashed in and before i start touching anything i get my tail out of there yeah then 
I normally normally don't make quilt labels all over the fabric. No, generally no. No. But uh, we're just doing something fun. Yeah. Um, so one more thing that we could use um, on here is, I'm just going to turn off the corner cam for a minute so you can see one more thing on the screen. Uh, there is an option to turn on the projector. Boop. So turning on the projector is going to project. Oh, next time you need 505, grab the 505 stick. Oh, the 505 stick is beautiful. Lovely. It's a nice wide glue stick. Yeah. Yes. So on screen right now, we can see that that basting line is ending up just fairly close to the center of our fabric. And then we could, could probably move upward in here just a little bit. I'm not sure where I put that. <laughs> I did a guesstimation. If you hit okay for that. That is the sky. Yeah. And then I will switch. Yeah, my point is the center, and then maybe I'll use my green. And that might be as far up as... Oh, no, we can move it all the way up. That, I think that's as far as it goes, but it looks actually dead on center, yeah. so we just made it in there. Yeah. That was fabulous. All right. So from there, I'm pretty happy with how this is laid out. Me too. I'm going to get rid of that little... And the iron-on, iron-off pen I used to mark will just take a little bit of heat to go away so this is actually ready to stitch um i'm i'd be pretty happy to do the basting box and the embroidery all in the same color fantastic yeah because the basting box will come up you know where my foot I'm gonna speed up my speed and let's go and watch out for yourself because this uh hoop's quite large and sometimes i have a tendency of leaning way too close we're not picking up our bob and thread Back to zero, and I'm just going to check that my bobbin's in there appropriately. Okay, hold that, or I can check the bobbin while you hold Perfect. the hoop. You check the bobbin, and I'll hold the hoop. Yep. Oh, the tail was just super short. Ah, uh, yes. Sometimes that happens. When in doubt, we check the thread. <laughs> there you go. There we go. And manage my tail because we don't want that trapped. Back in we go. And off screen, I actually put us back to stitch zero already. I always hit the foot down. Uh, there's an auto down option that you can turn on if you want. I think it is on on here. <laughs> I, just, I just keep hitting the foot down anyways. Um, you know the best thing about running a basting box before we start stitching? Is... Oh, that was a... Oh, we caught on our thread. Oh, we sure pop. did. What did us go? I don't know how that happened, but I don't either. There we go. A few stitches, and of course I do. Let's hit that trimming. Oh, I'm just gonna pull that out. <laughs> there we go. So sometimes if things go weird, you want to check all the way back to your spool itself. Our thread had caught on one of the other thread guides at the top of the machine. There we go. When in doubt. When something weird happens, just rethread. Yeah. That sounds better. <laughs> Rethreading is really the easiest solution to the problem. But the bobbin thread's short again. This is going very well. All right. <laughs> You're going to have to move. I am going to have to move. All right. The downside to the magnetic hoops is if you're too close to the far end from you, when the machine stops, it's very difficult to get the hoop off without um, repositioning.
Maybe the top thread's too short, too. Yeah, I might just give it a whole re-thread. Do you want me to hold it? Yeah, if you don't mind. I'll show you thread top and bottom because we're having a few issues. Do you have a little pair of scissors over there? Mm -hmm. And I want this there. Where I'm like, I don't mind re-threading this one. <laughs> I'll go for it. Easy as a touch of a button. Maybe. Oh, don't touch the button. Here we go. I'm just going to double check my little flap. Yep. It's not caught under the hoop. It is su not caught. Success. Okay, what I was saying, apparently I went way too bad, was the reason why I like the basting box so much is this is kind of like our last check to make sure our design's straight. Right. Because this is a lot easier to rip out than um, ripping out all those little tiny letters once you realize it's going crooked. Yeah. Because that's really annoying. One well, little letters don't usually stitch rip without destroying the fabric. Correct. So, so you just kind of had to get new ones. And this is looking pretty straight. I'm quite happy with that. I might, before we get started, get rid of this bill. There we go. Because I don't so, want to stitch that in. I'm just going to rip it. See if there's air in it. Just that tail from the second time we started there. Yeah, from my monkeying around. All right, let's see if that auto down bottom. It is. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. This machine is nice and quiet, too, which I love. So this is the small size of this font. Big size is much bigger. Maybe I can get the camera closer. Do you mind switching to front for a moment? Not at all. I was actually thinking I might, I might grab one of those boxes behind me and open it. Can yeah. I, can that's... I open one of those boxes? I think you should. They're very pretty. Because they're really cute, and I can't really tell what's in them. All I know is it might be something Tula Pink related. Okay, so while that thing is embroidering, we have nine minutes to go on the embroidery. Um, we're going to do a little unboxing for you as well. Because who doesn't love a good unbox? The box has fish on it. <laughs> it's adorable. You know, it reminds me so much of the fabric we have behind us, Tula Pink Fairy Dust. But fish. Oh, so fabulous. It's adorable. So... Um, these just arrived in today. A few people had pre-ordered, so they're getting phone calls shortly. Uh, first message inside the box is, please don't feed the fish. Don't feed them. Unless they're your fish and you know what you're You feeding. should feed those, yeah. Yes. Don't don't forget to feed those. Yeah. A uh, little instruction manual. What else is in there? Open it! Open it! It's so pink! <laughs> it's so pink! <laughs> I think, I think my nails match the box. I think so. I think so. I think, it was I think the only color you're missing in your nails is that pink. That's true. I had that pink in my nails last time. Uh, there's a little water pour. Yeah, because we all know how difficult it is to get water in irons. Yeah. It's really not the easiest someday. No, and every iron has a little different s spot. So mm -hmm. they always engineer these to work really nicely. And this one's kind of a cute... I like the color. Yeah. And then here it is. Out of the box. Oh, you're going to lose your water cup, bud. This is probably what I'm going to say is one of the cutest irons I've ever seen. You have to flip it upside down, right? Now. I have to flip it upside down. Like, so they can see the soul plate. <laughs> it says, don't feed the fish. It's just so cute. So silly. Um, I got one of the Aliso M3 Pros for yeah. Christmas. Love it. So I can't imagine how nice it would be to have that the weight of a full-sized iron. Um, I just bought the, the M3 Pro for a travel iron. Yep. Um, but I really, really, really like it. 
So. Well, the M3 Pro is also a good size for some in the hoop projects. Yeah, definitely. And so we have the large tulip pink irons. Our M3 Pro tulip paints are still on their way. We've not received those ones as of yet, but this one's stinking cute. Right. And the dials are like aqua. Really so cute. ridiculous. I would be happy ironing even my husband's dress shirts with this iron. And I don't like ironing dress shirts. No, I'd rather display it, not iron dress shirts. <laughs> I don't know if irons you can... aren't for dress shirts. What no, are you irons talking are for crafting. About? Irons are for crafting. Now the real test of an unboxing is can we get it back in the box? Oh yeah, that's always the hardest part that we have, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. Uh box back. It was this way. Yeah. This is when the real teamwork comes in. <laughs> Perfect. Good job. In the box. There we go. And then we should probably switch back and actually like watch our project stitch out here. Do you see the fish in the water tank? Or did you? There there are fish on the side of the water tank. I saw a fish on the there, side of the water like tank. There. Yeah. Was there another one inside it? Or just on the water? I don't know. I think if people want to find out, they have to get themselves a tulip pink leaf, so you might need to. I don't They're know. really cute. Right? I think I aimed our camera appropriately, maybe. Oh, no, I did not. I'm just going to switch that back to front. Right. Top. Or top. There we go. All right, Leah, could you please switch us back? Yep. Oh, that's much better. We we're just getting a corner of the fabric. And the real test is, can we figure out where the cord goes when this goes back in? So I didn't see the inside of the box, so I'm not quite sure. That's all you do. <laughs> Some of the <laughs> unboxing videos we've done. Um, the way we've managed the end of the unboxing, where we have to put it back in the box, is we've rewatched our videos. <laughs> what? That's our no. top secret tip. If you're not sure how it goes back in the box, rewatch the unboxing video you already made. But watch it in reverse. Yes. And then you'll see everything. Yes. We also usually lay all the stuff out in the way we took it out. So the one, the thing that winds up closest to you is the thing you took out last. So that yeah. one has to go in first. Yeah. Makes it the easiest. This is looking really good. Right? I like that blue on there. It's pretty, and it's subtle, which I know is what the goal was, honestly. Yeah. The goal was not for a super standout label. It was for a very subtle, a subtle. I love you. A personal message. Yeah. Yeah. But unless you know what's there, you're not going to. Well, you might. You might. If you're looking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she says inside too. Man. It's too late. You put it back in the box. I really, I, I did. I you took going, it out and you were like, it's going back. It's going back. I need the table clear to get the label <laughs> off in a couple minutes. <laughs> this label's stitching out pretty quickly. We still have so. five minutes. Sorry, I was too eager. You could have left the iron out. I could have, but then I would have forgot how it came out of the box. <laughs> well, should we talk about our spoiler alert from the other day? Oh, probably. Should we switch back to the front camera for a moment? So, you might have noticed we have a very fun background. Yes. It's very fun. Uh, the Doom and Gloom Defiance Project. I had to read it to make sure I said it right. Yeah. So, I've been... Working on it. Working on it. <laughs> so, you're going to have to come back tomorrow to find out more. Um, but we are launching a sewing challenge. It is a challenge. Yes. Very reminiscent of a challenge we ran four years ago. Yeah. So, you'll get fabric. You'll make a thing. You'll make a thing. And, and thing can be find out you want. more information tomorrow. Yes. But the bundles are adorable. They're really cute. I may have gotten to help. 
<laughs> yeah, they're adorable. They're so good. They were so, really fun. So that you'll find out more tomorrow because we were too busy making a label today to launch that whole thing. We were just having a lot of fun. Yeah. And a lot of short tails. <laughs> it happens to us too. Not yes. just you guys at home. I don't know. I think most of my boo-boos and sewing happen here on camera. On, on camera while I'm sitting here. Yeah. I yeah. think that's when most of my boo-boos happen. Because I, so. I haven't broken a needle at home in a really long time. <laughs> Something about putting a camera between you and the machine where it just makes... I think the machines get stage fright. <gasps> That's definitely they, it. They just get a little shy, you know? Their sewing machines are usually introverts. You know, they sit at home alone all day until their best friend comes and plays with them. Yeah. Um, so I think they just get a little stage fright when we have them hang out with so many friends. Yes my reasoning the secret I life like of it. the sewing machine the secret life of the sewing machine i keep telling people that their machines don't have feelings because if they do that's a little too too much ai sewing machines i like to imagine they do sometimes but they don't they don't really because they're computers but and they're sewing machines they have personalities they have names that's fair i don't know have you named yours nope why not because I never found a name that stuck. Mm. I have Benny, mm -hmm. Jet, Iris, and I haven't named my other one. It might be Cummy Dougie. So, give you a bit of background on that one. I have a brother. But I also have a brother. <laughs> <laughs> and my brother's middle name is Benjamin. So that's where Benny came from. Yeah. So, my sewing machine, that's a brother NK575, is named Ben. Yep. And then I was like, hmm, I need an industrial in my life. So, I have an industrial, and I was thinking, Benny and the Jets. So, my industrial's named Jet. Nice. And then Iris is my old serger. I like it. Because she just keeps going. Yep. And then I think it has to be Dougie for the other brother in my room. Yes. Okay. What's his name? Okay. Dougie. <laughs> That's the embroidery machine. The NQ1700. Yes. Nice. How'd you guess? Well, I know what you have. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely have personalities. Mine's a drama queen. Aww. If you treat them nicely, and clean them, oil them as recommended by the manufacturer. Yep. New needles more often than you think. You think about it. They're a little bit like us. They need spa days sometimes. They, they need spa days. They need a little bit of lotion or oil, most machines. Uh, they need every once in a while, what would you call it? A new needle. New fingernails. Yeah. Like new fingernails. They need a new needle. Um, they need to be fed thread. Yes. So you have to change that. And if you're feeding them junky thread. Then then they get all dramatic. It's true. And if you're not putting very good sewing machine needles in, or you have like a fur on it and you haven't changed in a while, or it's getting dull, then they start acting out and be aggressive. Because it's just uncomfortable. They snap their needles and they're just, you know, it's kind of like when I get angry, right? They have personalities. Yes. <laughs> it's turning out really lovely. It's so cute. I like it. Almost there. One last word. And only one minute to do it. It's quite reasonable. That is quite reasonable. It's nice and speedy. Almost wondering if I should get thread out of it. I think it'll be fine. I suppose it hasn't wrapped around my foot yet. It's not going to. I had that happen the other day. Stitch the foot to your quilt when you were in yes. <laughs> I definitely uh, stitched my foot to my quilt. I can say 
that I was glad I was paying attention. Yeah. Because I was able to stop my machine very quickly. And then uh, nothing really bad happened. I just stopped my machine, clipped the thread, and backed it up a few stitches and kept going. Nice. Yeah. They just say sometimes it's really good to babysit. Keep yeah. an eyeball. Yeah, it really, really depends what you're up to. Um, 100%. If you're wanting a machine that you don't have to babysit as much on many things, a multi needle. A multi needle might be the way to go. And if you want to know more about multi needles, we have an event coming up. Oh, an event! The first of the things for the bag you're going to get at the event showed up today. Yes, I saw it, and I was immediately very excited, and I had to look through the whole book. Yeah. Um, so we're doing a brother multi needle event on May 11th. Um, Mostly the focus of that will be if you're thinking you want a machine for business, because you'd like to make money doing embroidery and uh, increase your efficiency. Um, so it's definitely something you might want to check out. Details are online, but we have multi-needles. And that is that is how I get tons of embroidery done around, you know, kids and work and... Well, kids, you can else. set it, program your stops or holds. What's the appropriate Hold, word? Probably. Hold? Or stop, yeah. Because if you're doing applique, you need to tell it to not keep going. Um, <laughs> but lots of times you can just, like, embroider for 30 minutes straight and do 10 color changes and that's just fine. And you can leave it alone. Yep. So, that is our label. That looks beautiful. Um, usually what I do from this point, I'm going to let... We're going to figure out how long the label will be before I start removing a whole bunch of stabilizer. Um, but the clean and tear can definitely come off all the way around our label. And I would just cut the poly mesh to whatever size we're cutting the label. It's a great idea. But really, I'd rather cut this to size intact before removing anything. And we can use the basting line to measure away from. That's great. Because so then the it'll be top and centered bottom. and straight. Right? Ah. Love it. Genius. And that that basin line's long enough that we could line up along the whole width of fabric if that's what our friend wants to do. Beautiful. Right? I can't wait to show this to her tomorrow. And then usually I cut about half inch. If this was just the label itself and that's all I was doing, I would cut a half inch either side and press this seam allowances under. Once mm -hmm. I remove the clean and tear, I leave the poly mesh in because it'll stay soft. Yep. Um, and it won't be super bulky. It'll be fine. Um, so that's how I make the label from here. Ooh. And then I hand, I hand sew my labels on. Yes. I've and been hand sewing a your binding. label on. I'm going to start because I finished my binding. Right. I'm not a hand sewer. So when I hand sew, it takes me a very long time. That's okay. Because my fingers aren't used to it. So I wear, I figured out, I like wearing a thimble on my middle finger yep. while I sew. Because I noticed this part of my finger was getting raw. Yep. And that was from me mindlessly pushing my needle up. So I like that my was... little, I have a little leather thimble from clover nice and it has a little coin tip it's fantastic so there you go making a label on your xp3 it's perfect but, but really the way we've made this label could be done on most machines it really could be yeah so whatever machine you have we look forward to seeing the next quilt label that you make Please or the first quilt that. label that you make if you haven't made one before <laughs> <laughs> start labeling your quilts good for you labeling your quilts is so good for you Yes, that's good for your quilts, too. Because if they go missing, there's a paper trail. This is true. And a record. And and I have a bunch of baby quilts for my kids that I know roughly who made them. But I was a very, 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 very tired parent <laughs> when I got about three at the same time. So I only, I only know vaguely who made all three, not specifically who made each one. Mm. So it would be nice to have a better record. Every time I make one for my nephews, I write, love your favorite auntie. And then in brackets... Chelsea. Perfect. I love it. <laughs> so without further ado, we're going to let you guys go for the night and either to go make labels, find yourself a new iron, take a picture of your label, send it our way. 
education at mycelium.ca.